How are you? My dear student, I think you are well by the grace of Almighty Allah in the Karuna epidemic session. You are staying at home and keeping fit, maintaining hygiene. I am MBA Islam, Assistant Professor, Department of English, Shemanta Adarsha College, Shatkira. Welcome to ASS English. I think those who are the students of ASSC course and the students of ASSC course both will be benefit, benefited from this class. Today's topic is verb. So, I would like to elaborate everything regarding verb. Let's start. At first you have to know what is a verb. Dear students, verb is a word that expresses an action or a state or a situation. So, what is a verb? Verb is a word that expresses any state that expresses any situation or action in a sentence. So, I think verb is the life force of a sentence. Without verb, you cannot be able to make any sentence. So, verb is the important part of a sentence. Today, um, we must be serious from the starting of this class. So, I would like to request you take your pen and notebooks with you uh, and take down what I am telling you. Verb. Uh, we have already got the definition of verb. Um, if we are able to know all the classifications of verb, we must be able to do verb correction properly. We must be able to do completing sentences well and we must be able to do transformation of sentences. So, it has many usefulnesses Let's start to classify verb. Verb can be divided into two parts, mainly two parts. I mean finite verb and the remaining on non-finite verb. Now we have to know the facets of finite verb. What are the finite verbs? Okay. Dear students, finite verb uh, has some characteristics with which we can recognize a, a finite verb in a sentence. What are they? Do you know what are they? Yes, I'm telling you. Finite verb is a sus a verb. Finite verb is sus a verb. That express that expresses the complete expression, complete meaning of a sentence. I mean that ends up the is is. On the other hand, non-finite verb is a verb that does not do that. I think that does not end up the meaning of a sentence. So. Uh, this is the main difference between two, finite verb and non-finite verb. Now I am going to the second phase of them. Finite verb is sensed on the basis of number and person of the subject of the sentence. It is mainly sensed according, according to the patterns of verb. 
according to the patterns of tense. On the other hand, non-finite verb is unsensed. It cannot be sensed or it, uh, never, it, it is never sensed according to the number and persons and the various uh, forms of tenses. So, I think tense has no effect on non-finite verbs. But, uh, this finite verb is totally modified, changed uh, due to the changing formations of verb. Okay? So, uh, to know finite verb, we have to know the various formations of tense. But without knowing tense or knowing the various formations of tense, uh, one can recognize the formation of non-finite verb. One can identify the non-finite verb through uh, their structures. Okay, now I am going to the third features of finite verb and uh, non-finite verb. The third feature is this finite verb helps us to catch the form of tense in a sentence. This finite verb helps us to catch the tense, either, either it is present tense or past tense. On the other hand, non-finite verb can never help us to catch the form of tense. Okay? Now, I am giving you an example to you to clear the sense, clear the features of a non-finite verb and finite verb. She She goes to Dhaka to visit the Jew. She goes to Dhaka to visit the Jew. Here we have two verbs. Goes to visit. Goes to visit. So uh, look at the two forms of these two verbs. Here goes helps us to identify the tense of the sentence. Surely it indicates present tense. So this goes here the finite verb. This goes here the finite verb in the sentence. Finite verb. And to visit here is a non-finite verb. Why? Because it cannot indicate any form of tense. At the same time, uh, it does not help us to complete the sense, complete the meaning of the sentence, end up the meaning of the sentence. She goes to Dhaka. Here, the case has been com completed through this path. But to visit, she to visit the Jew, she to visit the Jew, Jew, only this group of words cannot complete the complete sense of the sentence, complete meaning of the sentence. So, uh, fi finite verb helps us to complete the meaning. The non-finite verb cannot do that. So, to visit here, non-finite verb. Okay. I am also giving another example of this. Rahim It's eyes going home. Here we have also 
two verbs in this sentence. Number one is and the second one going. It's here completes the sense of the sentence and uh, also helps us to recognize the sentence. Cast the form of tense. So it's here the finite verb. But going, going does not indicate the form of tense of the sentence at a time. Uh, it does not help us to cast the tense at a time. Uh, it cannot express the full meaning of the sentence. So here goes uh, is a non-finite verb. Non-finite verb. Finite verb. So dear student, what we have learned from this um, parts, I mean this classification. At first we have known verb is mainly are two kinds finite verb, non-finite verb. And I have also referred to you some features of both of them. Finite verb helps us to complete the meaning of a sentence. I mean ends up uh, the speech. On the other hand, and finite verb cannot do that. Finite verb is changeable, but non-finite verb is totally unchanged. Finite verb helps us to cast the tense, but non-finite verb cannot do that. Okay, now, now I am going to classify finite verb. Okay, finite verb is uh, two kinds. Number one, principal verb, principal verb. It is another name that is main verb. Okay, principal verb is called main verb. And the later on, auxiliary, auxiliary verb. So, finite verb can be divided into two divisions. Number one, principal verb or main verb, and the second one or later one, auxiliary verb. Okay, uh, what is a principal verb? Principal verb is such a verb that can express any action freely. Principal verb is a verb that can express the meaning of a sentence freely, independently. Okay? But auxiliary verbs always helps the auxiliary verbs sometimes helps the principal verb to complete the meaning of a sentence. Uh, at the same time, in some cases, we find them as auxiliaries. Okay, I am giving you an example of this. He is a good student. Student. Okay, here is is a main verb. Why? Because there is no main verb after this auxiliary. So here is is a main verb. He is going to college. Here is is an auxiliary verb. Why? Because there is a, a main verb after this auxiliary going. So. Uh, here is is a is is an auxiliary and this is is a main verb I mean principal verb okay so 
auxiliary just uh, helps the main verb uh, to complete the meaning of a sentence. In some cases, uh, auxiliary may be the principal verb. Okay. Now I am going to classify um, uh, the principal verb. Principal verb is a two kinds. Transitive verb and intransitive verb. What are they? What is the face all of this transitive verb and intransitive verb? Do you know, dear students? Okay, I am telling you, you can look down. Transitive verb is a verb that uh, always takes an object. The verb that takes an object is a transitive verb. Uh, it's also a part of principal verb. On the other hand, intransitive verb is such a verb that does not take any object to complete the meaning of a sentence. Okay? So, the verb that does not take any object is called transitive verb and the verb that takes object is transitive verb. So, I am once again giving you an example to clear this. Suppose, uh, they Play football. Here, play uh, has taken an object. Ball, football is the object of the verb play. So, play is transitive verb here. And they are playing. Now they are playing. Now they are playing. Here the verb play uh, has not taken any object. So play here, I mean playing here is the intransitive verb. Okay? Why? Because there is no object after this verb. So what we have learned from this section. Transitive verb is a verb that always takes an object. Intransitive verb is a verb that does not take any object to complete the meaning of a sentence. Okay. Now I am going to classify the auxiliary verbs. Dear students, auxiliary means helping, helping verb. This is called helping verb. This verb helps the main verb to uh, complete the meaning of a sentence. Uh, when uh, they help the main verb, they cannot express their own meaning on that time. Okay? They then just the main verb to express the Sim express the meaning of a sentence. So, uh, now I am going to classify the auxiliary verbs. Auxiliary verbs uh, is mainly of three kinds. Number one, very plastic auxiliary. What are they? Periphrastic auxiliary is a auxiliary that are that is as like as B plus two have verb plus two use two going to so, these are the auxiliaries that are called periphrastic auxiliary. Okay? Uh, after 
the auxiliaries we see two. So uh, B2, B plus two, M2 is two, R2. This are the periphastic auxiliary uh, side by side. Have bar plus two. Have two, has two, had two. These are the periphastic auxiliary used to going to. So uh, after this auxiliary, we have to use the base form. I mean uh, the uh, basic form of bar. I am going to give you an another example of this. She is going to often a school. Here is going to is a periphrastic auxiliary. And after this auxiliary, we have a main bar that is often. Here, this often is the base form. So, uh, is going to uh, takes the base form of bar. Okay, learners. Uh, now I am going to the second uh, type of auxiliary bar and the type is model auxiliary. What are they? Model auxiliary. Model auxiliary um, does not simply does not uh, we do not uh, find model auxiliary simply in the uh, form of tense in the forms of tense i mean uh, only shall and will are found in a few certain definite tense so uh, generally this model auxiliary uh, we do not find them in the various forms of things. What are uh, model auxiliary? Can, could, may, might, would, should, shall, will. These are the model auxiliary. These are the model auxiliaries. Can, could, These are the model auxiliaries. Uh, in a sentence, model auxiliary is merely uh, the auxiliary. It can never be the main verb of a sentence. So, after this auxiliary, we have to use the uh, base form of of a verb. Now I am going to the another section of auxiliary that is primary auxiliary. Primary auxiliary. These auxiliary are mostly seen in various forms of tense. And uh, it is a two, three kinds. Number one, do verbs. Do, does, and did. These three are called do verb. Be verb. And is, are, was, were. These five, these five are, these five auxiliaries are called be verb. Okay, have far, have, has, had. These three auxiliaries are called have far. Dear learners, um, these are the primary auxiliaries that are mostly used in various forms of tense. Do, does, did. After do, does, did, 
um, uh, we have to use the base form of verb and after we verb we have to use verb plus ing or verb tb I and in the past participle uh, after have verb uh, we have to use the past participle form of verb thus uh, now we can see some examples of the uh, various uses of various auxiliaries I mean primary auxiliaries he does not do that after the auxiliary does, we have to use the base form of this main verb, do, do. Do will be the same, I mean do. After we verb, what we have to use? She is do the job. After we verb, we have to use verb plus ing doing if the subject is active okay if the subject is active uh, then uh, we have to uh, use verb plus ing after the be verb okay besides she is taken to hospital here uh, we see uh, after we verb we see the past participle form of the verb take so uh, whenever we uh, find the subject as passive the verb I mean the main verb must be past participle here the subject uh, she is passive she is not uh, doing the work take for this reason uh, after we verb we have to use the first principle form of the verb take okay and um, after have verb we have to use the first principle form of the main verb she has take I mean taken it okay so after have verb uh, we have used the first participle form of taken. Okay, so uh, I have uh, uh, already referred to you the one part of verb that is finite verb, and uh, we have also uh, the non finite verb to dis describe or narrate before you. Uh, in the next class, I will discuss this topic non-finite verb okay dear learners um, I have already referred to you the various uses the classifications uh, various phrases of finite verb so uh, from this discussion it is clear to you that finite verb is changed due to the various uh, formations various patterns of Tense. Tense has a uh, many important role on finite verb. So uh, I think the class will be effective if you are the class will be effective um, to the students of SSC and SSC and SSC level. Uh, because without verb we cannot be able to uh, do the uh, related grammar I mean related topics so um, I would like to end up uh, my class today saying saying uh, you must stay at home and maintain the hygiene to protect the COVID-19, I mean coronavirus, uh, be careful, keep fit, 
thanks for staying with me for a long time and um, I think you will be you will be ready for my next class thank, thank you once again